rest of my life. It is way too early to be waking up and going to an airport. We were up at the most unreasonable time in the morning imaginable to get a very small plane to a very remote location to look for gnomes. Yes, and gnomes in this area actually come in the shape and form of pit vipers. But the reason we know they're gnomes and not real pit vipers <laughs> is because they come in all different colors that should a snake should never come in, all right? So we're absolutely convinced there's gnomes on this island and we're going to go find them. Here we go. Takeoff is happening. Guys, so we just tried to take off and mid takeoff the plane just they just aborted. It just they just completely aborted and now they're telling us there's technical difficulties and we have to assess safety. What is going on on this trip, dude? This is at the worst possible start. And uh, that's it folks, we have uh, arrived at our destination, which is the exact same place we started. <laughs> the flight has been aborted and we do not know what's coming next. More so about four meters behind, we were actually closer to where we started than where we are flying now. Fast forward another hour and we're boarding back on the plane again. Let's hope that it takes off this time and we don't end up in the bottom of the South China Sea, which I'd say the chances of have increased by about 40%. Here we are guys, back on the world's shittest plane. And let's hope uh, my next update is not from the bottom of the South China Sea. We've made it. Barely. We've made it. Freaking barely. There are people and they're getting ready. We are getting ready. Oh, serious helmet, serious helmet. Serious. I'm over here rocking the goofy ass. Oh, look at the mountain in the background. That's where we're going now. See you there. There's the first proper look at the habitat here. Looking pretty damn nice, honestly. I'm surprised by how different it is to Thailand here. It's really beautiful. So great to travel to somewhere where I haven't like been before. It's been so, so long since I've been to like a new habitat. So this is just a really special moment for me to soak this in. First few minutes of the trip before things get crazy. Food has been demolished and it is time for the first night of herping. Vibes here are more like chilling and drinking than going herping, but we're gonna we're gonna try and put some put some motivation together, aren't we, Cripper? <laughs> what the piss, you ass. <laughs> and the time has come. We have hit the forest. And from what I hear, this forest is pretty full of gnomes. I mean, snakes, sorry. But that said, this particular trail isn't known. I haven't seen anything from here. It just looks good. It's close to our accommodation. So we're going to hit it, see what shows up tonight. Let's go. I got one, boys. Look up there on the tree. Few minutes into the trail and we've got me and Harry at least number one target morph as the first snake here tonight. Damn, that looks nice. Whoo. And there you go, guys. There it is. The first Trimurosaurus McGregori of the trip within the first five minutes of hiking. And yeah, as I mentioned, this was the morph I wanted to see the most. Bright yellow with the awesome black spotting on the back. I just think that's such a cool coloration. Decent sized snake too. I wouldn't say this is as big as they get, but it's certainly an adult. Hello, can we move back here, please? Look at that head in the Pariahs complex. Although I can't say I see it too much, like too much similarity between Hague and I and Samachanus in its head. Definitely got the elongated snout, but that is just an unreal viper. Like look at the colors on that coming out here. Hard to believe this thing is real. And we think this one's approaching shed. It's got a slightly faded touch to it. So there's a good chance we could find one which is even more vibrant than this. Such an incredible snake. Isolated here on these islands way off the north of the Philippines. Absolutely crazy animal. And this is only gnome number one, gnome morph number one. They're known to take many colors and sizes pretending to be snakes, but alas, they don't know what snakes are supposed to look like. So they end up looking like this. Pretty wild, huh? But we got you, Gnome. We got you. You're documented. 
All right, so Aiden just picked up this Lycodon alcalii, which is the second and I think last endemic snake species to Batans. And this one, believe us, is so much rarer than McGregorii. This is actually considered to be quite a rare species here on the island, and it's got really sharp teeth and it loves to bite. This is just typical, isn't it? Wolf snakes are incredibly annoying. It's a pretty bland wolf snake overall. It's got some patterning, which I believe they even lose when they get really big. This is still an adult. It's got quite a cute head. You see, it's, look at those, let's take a close up of those eyes. They have really kind of goofy, bulging eyes. And overall, it is a wolf snake. It's not the most remarkable snake in the world, but it is a rare endemic species, something we're really hoping to see when we're here. And that's a great start to the night. It was just climbing the base of that tree over there. And uh, it is absolutely welcome. Let's take a proper look at those goofy eyes. Yeah, look. <laughs> Look at the, they, they point, they go in like different directions. They really look comical. But yeah, great find. Cheers, buddy. I'll mm. take that. All right, we've been hiking pretty far. And aside from that, like I haven't seen anything for a while, but I think we're just about getting into some good quality rainforest. And there's going to be something anywhere. It's going to be down here. So wouldn't be surprised if the next clip is a snake. Holy crap, guys. Seconds after I said that, we were sitting in the dark with our lights off and I suddenly heard a noise in front of me. I looked down and this McGregorite has caught a frog in here. Let's see. The timing of that, I was fully filming the exact frog that it's just predated on. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it going on down there. Holy shit. Does anybody have a gentle stick we can like gently move it out with? Sure. Yeah, okay. Someone hold this for a second. Okay guys, so I uh, moved it away and now you can actually see it. This was the craziest way that we could possibly find one, wasn't it? We sat down in the exact place we were messing about in the daytime when we came out to scout this spot. All right, he's backed up into this thick vegetation. We all got a couple photos. Man, we're just gonna make sure he can finish his meal in peace down here in this grassy verge. Not where I expected to find one of these, um, but fantastic to find a perfect quality version of my favorite morph in this incredible manner. What, this is one of the most ridiculous snake finds I've ever had. Like, what an introduction to the trip. Let's go. All right, so next reptile of the night is our first lizard, and it's uh, Draco. We're not sure exactly what species it is, but uh, it's looking pretty overexposed there. That's all I can say about it. Here, you can kind of see the wings of it. The wind's picking up pretty bad, so I don't know how well you can hear me, but yeah, it's got nice kind of black markings between its wings. It's darkened up now, but it was very pale when we caught it. We're just gonna grab a couple quick photos and let it go. Well, I'll start calling to them. All right, so we got another snake, and believe it or not, despite how I was talking about how this is rare, we got another like an alkali, alkali. Um, the, I don't know what the common name is, Batana's wolf snake, maybe. I'll just roll with that for now. Mm -hmm. This one's big. It's about twice the size of the last one, and you can see absolutely no patterning whatsoever on the body. But as you can see, it has the same goofy eyes, same interesting shaped head. But yeah, Harry was just saying how these Philippine lycodon are all kind of distinct and probably have slightly different phylogenetic lineages uh, in, in a way to the ones we see in Thailand and stuff. But it's certainly cool that we got four snakes tonight and uh, the two endemics, and we got to see uh, some different sizes and different color morphs and different activity patterns. Aiden caught his on the tree. I don't know who spotted this one, but it was just crossing on the ground, right? Yeah. Indeed. And uh, yeah, that's 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 probably going to be our last snake for tonight because we're actually getting very near back to the, the bikes. Um, and then we're very, very close to our hotel. We just did a little local walk tonight and we saw some snakes, which was cool. Good morning, one and all. Sorry I didn't give an outro last night. We got a bit caught up driving the bikes, but yeah, we were so sleep deprived that we only did a little walk, but damn, it was cool. That mountain in the background produced some really amazing observations and I have a feeling it's gonna produce even better ones tonight. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get out during the daytime, see what's going on, have a good time, mess around. This is kind of a holiday for us, by the way, not like an intense herping trip. We're not splitting up or anything. We're sticking together, having fun together as a group and it has been such fun so far. So thank you for watching. Today is more serious though. We are gonna get out and check out some new spots. Let's get to it. All right. Into the jungle, brand new spot. Going to be exploring for nighttime areas and keeping our eye out for some stuff during the daytime. Let's get it. Local fizzies. Local yeah. fizzies. All right, so we decided to do some uh, daytime sort of chill beach stuff, uh, snorkeling around this coral reef. 
And in the reef, do you mind if I take this? Help yourself. Check it out. This was caught swimming in the water. Laticauda colubrina, banded sea crate. Juvenile, little one. Really, really dinky little one. You know, we are planning on going and looking for these tonight. And uh, this was actually our, our primary area we were looking at. And, uh, but no, nope, one was just swimming around peacefully in the reef during the daytime. And we finally got a daytime snake for this trip. <laughs> it's, it's overdue. We were thinking it would be a land snake, but so far everything's been at night except this beautiful sea crate. Insane. How cool is that, huh? Were you, was it just where you and Alex were swimming? Yeah, literally like 20 meters this way. Nice. That beautiful little juvenile sea crate. Nice little mask they have on their head at this size. But yeah, I'm, most of us didn't bring our cameras, so we'll probably just grab a couple foam picks and let it go back into the water. But yeah, these are super docile, if you guys don't know. Like, people very, very, people very much free handle these because they are known not to bite and their fangs are extremely small. But they are highly venomous, worth noting. That's why we're holding it by the tail here. <laughs> All right, Keith, <laughs> night number two of herping. Oh, shit, hold on, take this off me. Loach? Cut, cut this. <laughs> Fucking man's legs. <laughs> All right, and we have touched down for the second night of herping. This is going to be a longer night of herping with a lot of diversity to it. So. I think it's gonna be good. Last night was great. Let's make it even better tonight. And we'll have something special in store once we're done with the forest. So let's get to it. Oh, look at the... All right, first snake, Keith just grabbed another lichen and alcala eye. I have to rescind everything I said in the first clip. These are common as balls here. For whatever reason, I just thought they weren't because I hadn't seen many pictures of them from people that came before, but maybe they saw loads and just didn't post them. Check out that wild parasite as well. Yeah, is it like embedded inside it? Or what's, hold what's it still? On? Yeah, it's gonna burst out of it, mate. Ooh. Yeah. The big adult we found had a few parasites too. This one's got a rather large one. But we saw a few of these last night, so we'll just set this one be. Well, here's something special along the side. Our first ever coconut crab. We heard they were around on the island, but apparently very rare. I don't know how true that is, but this is the first one we've seen since we've been here. It's actually quite small. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but yeah, they got big pincers. Doesn't seem particularly defensive and really interesting. If you guys don't know, these can get absolutely giant. I mean, this is big already, but they can get truly huge. Size. Yeah, like abs actually ridiculous. This is probably the size you majority see them in the wild these days because I'm guessing all the big ones get caught and eaten. But yeah, that's that's a cool animal right there. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Another reptile walking up this kind of disturbed stream is this Eutropis species. Um, it looks very similar to the ones we get in Thailand, but the coloring is different, so it's clearly a different species. New one for me. Cute little skink, it's like ground skinks. First skink we've seen in our time here. We haven't been inundated with lizards whatsoever, but look at his little smile. Extremely cute. You guys know I love skinks. Not the biggest fan of the general Eutropis genus. They're kind of boring, but this is uh, nice to see here. Nice stripy boy. Look at that. All right, we just road cruised a wolf snake. Um, in a pretty crappy habitat. And we think, I think this one should be the other one. I think it's like a Muller eye. It's got the very, lots of spotting on the side of the head, but we'd have to like look at the paper again to be sure. But now this is making me think the first one on the first night was Muller eye, but that, we looked at pictures between them and we could somehow, we're more convinced of otherwise. Either way, it's a wolf snake. And, <laughs> and judging by the fact we found it in like crappy habitat, it's very banded and does have the spotting on the side of the face, then maybe we'll go with one. But for now, we're not sure on the spot. We'll know very soon. All right, so Beverage and I just completely truncated the rivers because we couldn't find anything. Came down this weird ass path and check it out, guys. First, like brown, orange morph, Trimerosaurus McGregori. Second morph of the trip, Should chilling here in these parts. No, 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 lights, lights fine how it is. That's a good sight right there. Now we've uh, we've kind of been scoping around the island, checking out different streams. And honestly, the streams that we expected to be good were nowhere near as good as we expected. And we've come down into this different habitat type and here they are, a beauty here, sitting in situ. New morph, let's go. Can that tree be climbed? All right, guys, we've got another snake. It's a huge Goniosoma oxycephalum. Guys, there's a gnome. What? Oh my <laughs> Just God. Joking. Just joking. <laughs> All right, my heartbeat is just out crazy. I don't think any of that was on film, but I am outrageously high from the ground here. And I just managed to procure it, handed it down to the guys down there. And now I can get my snake out, out my pocket. I mean, my hook out my pocket. I'm just, 
Oh, yeah, that. Ooh, I said the wrong thing twice. <laughs> oh my word. But we got it. That's pretty awesome. Let's go take a look. All right, guys. I'm down from up there, and here you can see this beautiful, huge, six foot red tailed racer. Like, I can. Maybe I can put my hand like next to it here. I can't really, but believe me, it's big. And he wasn't too happy to come down from that tree for sure. He bit Aiden pretty badly. But this is an incredibly beautiful snake. And uh, first for Keith Ale and Alex, first time they've seen it before. Aiden saw it when he came on a, some of our Explore Herpetology tours. But this was the first one he was actually present for the catch up. And it's just looking absolutely exquisite there. But pretty interesting about this one. If you take a look. Oh, hello, he's charging me. It doesn't really have a red tail whatsoever. It has more of a, okay, what's going on? Snake. Yeah, it has more of a green tail, which I don't know if that's like just unique to this individual. I haven't seen too many looks at their tails so much, but that's a beautiful snake. Let me get it in hand for you guys so you can just see the size, like, yeah, easily six foot. You know, we're looking at almost two meters on this one, 1 1.8 something very very big and I, we, I mean i could tell when it was in the tree that it was one of the largest gonya somewhere i've ever seen i'd probably go as far as say this is the largest gonya somewhere i've ever seen but fantastic little addition not a target species of mine but the other guys certainly wanted to see it and uh we're gonna get on try and find some more stuff before the night ends hi right, so after beating our way through the gonya soma area we're up in this weird ass habitat here and Keith, of all people, uh -oh. has found... The, the, the dark horse. <laughs> the, the dark horse strikes again. Look at that, guys. What a spot to find one. I would never expect to find one in this microhabitat. This is in situ. Oh, I'm going to take a picture before it moves. One sec. All right, we got it out now, and you can see it against this rock. We figured it would look pretty cool against this. Not the kind of sight you expect to see in Asia, this kind of coloured snake in this kind of environment. Like, what is this thickest? But yeah. Um... <laughs> Alex pointed out that it kind of reminds me of Marg, like in a weird way, with like the kind of silver body and those uh, speckled markings. They are almost Marg-like, but it's certainly a cool snake. I'm glad we're getting the numbers up tonight and we are not stopping here. This is going to be a long one, so i going to let this boy cruise off it. Okay, so post Gonyosoma, we are uh, kind of going to the beach. I don't know what we're cooking right now. Potentially water, but there could be light at the end of the tunnel. You never know. All right, Aiden just spotted this uh, nice brown morph, way nicer than the one me and Aiden got before. This one's got nice, like, dark spotting on the dorsum. I mean, I, I called it orange. It's, it's brown. Let's be totally, let's be totally honest here. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty there, sitting still for once. Not often, not a common occurrence for this species whatsoever to be sitting even remotely still. Damn, guys! Moments after that small brown one we just found. Just got the biggest McGregor eye we've seen by far, by a significant margin. Like, look at the size of this thing. Okay, you can see it in Aiden's hand here. Like, this is absolutely massive. It's almost like triple the size of other ones, like girth-wise, and the length is just ridiculous. Like, we're certain it's gravid, which is why Aiden's being so gentle with it. Yeah, this head is massive too. Unfortunately, it's the ugliest morph going, but, uh, on that note, we're going to let it go because this girl, we don't want to harass too much. I'll just grab a quick phone photo. We'll get out of here. All right. Harry managed to rustle up this beautiful, hold on, let me adjust my light. Yeah, this beautiful black and yellow morph. And this is actually the first one we've seen, which we can get a proper look at. Of course, the first one, the big one we had was in shed. The second one was eating a frog, but this one just absolutely glorious. As I said before, my favorite morph, and it's fantastic to see one in absolute prime condition where we can take a proper look at it. Now that's a proper look at this snake. Look at that. Absolutely stunning McGregor's Pit Viper. Absolutely unreal color variation for a viper. Like just simply unbelievable seeing these sitting around in the bushes. It's ridiculous. This is a fantastic find, but we're hoping to turn up more tonight. So we're gonna keep on going. Ah, new morph alert. Check this out. This is the eyelash viper version, the just plain banana yellow McGregor's Pit Viper. Was really hoping we'd see one of these while we're here. And this one has emerged in the forest tonight. Oh, well, climbing over stuff. Look at it. Yeah, absolutely not meant to be camouflaged at all, you would think. But actually, there's a surprising amount of bright yellow leaves, bright yellow plants here. And I thought I saw them a couple times. So yeah, I don't know how overexposed this is because it is so yellow, like yellow, yellow, yellow. 
an incredible snake. Very, very happy to see this one. So is everyone happy to see this yellow morph? Although it's not that big compared to some of the other ones we've seen. We've seen some bigger McGregor eye in this time and this one's probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest, I think actually that we've seen so far. Uh, yeah, yeah, the smallest one we've seen so far. Not a juvenile, haven't seen one single juvenile. You can see my hand next to this one here. A sub adult for sure, like not truly in that juvenile face. Okay, now this is a morph right here. I, I wasn't even sure. That, I don't, don't think I've even seen a picture of this morph before. I don't know how to describe it. White and black. It's got to be the best way to put it. This is, yeah, we've kind of, we've all agreed that this is decent. Well, not all agree. Wait, I guess with a general consensus, this is the second best morph we've encountered and for sure the best one of the night. This is actually exquisite. I mean, look at the patterning on the head. It's just ridiculous how variable this viper is. Like, can you guys believe this is the same one as those bright banana yellow one or those brown ones we saw already tonight? Like, it's just incredible. Look at it here on this rock. I mean, what does this blend into? <laughs> We're wondering if like, maybe a lack of predators has allowed them to just have crazy color morphology on this island, but their numbers are good. So that would also contribute to the idea that they don't have many natural predators here. I guess raptors would pick them off, but vipers that spend most of their time under the canopy, near the forest floor, they're not gonna be picked off too often. I don't wanna to get too close to this one because this one does bite. Like most of these have been extremely docile, but this one has been prone to just striking and striking and striking. I took some pictures before we filmed and it was just biting the end of my hook like crazy. It's just ridiculous. Maybe even give you guys an, an example of how defensive this species is. Look at that, look at that. Leaving venom on the hook as well. Like only, all I have to do is... <sighs> Did you see that? <laughs> I'm gonna have to wash that, bro. It's bit multiple times already and it still had that much venom remaining. Like this one has a bad attitude. Maybe he's been caught by herpers before, but really hardly anyone comes to. This is quite a difficult place to get to. Very difficult to get the kind of permits to explore here, so. Yeah, we feel we're incredibly fortunate that Keith and I planned out this little holiday for us absolutely perfectly. A getaway from Thailand where we could see some absolutely incredible snakes. And here's one of the absolute best so far. A fantastic example of McGregor's Pit Viper. One of the most incredible and variable Pit Vipers in the world. Simply awesome. What are your thoughts, God Boss? I am absolutely deceased for the rest of my life. <laughs> All right, well, uh, this could be the closest we get to our white morph. This is a uh, off-white morph, we've decided to call it. I wonder if it's expensive. <laughs> I'm not gonna film this one for long. It's kind of in shed, but it is pale. So it's the closest we've come to white. I think McGregor's haven't been like super abundant. There's a wasp on my finger. They haven't been super... <laughs> They haven't been super abundant here, but uh, it's just the end of the breeding season. So females are on, well, well a gravid uh, hiding away and males are resting up. Um, but this one, yes, yeah, certainly an interestingly colored pit viper. If this was anywhere else in the world, we'd be like, damn, son. But except here, we've already seen some absolutely ridiculous, stunningly beautiful snakes tonight. So this one's going straight in the garbage. Just kidding, just kidding. It's going down into the dirt. All right, okay, so our very last herb of our time here before we've got to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning This past midnight now is going to be looking for sea crates here on the coast The exact same spot where we saw them during the daytime. We had other spots in mind but We figured we know they're 100% here. So let's get out and see what we can find Well, they lost their 3000 making an appearance, so You know things are getting serious All right, here we go guys Check it out, Laticauda colubrina swimming in this little rock pool here. How beautiful is that? This one's decent size. Um, about the, the, as big as the biggest one we saw on our swim during the daytime. And we were really hoping we'd find one in one of these rock pools so we could just kind of observe it. Oh, something spooked it. It's off over there. Damn, as I was filming a portrait version, we just spotted, we completely missed this amazing puffer fish. Just chilling in this, oh please, no, no. <laughs> I almost went in the water with my other shoe. I've got a flight to catch at 6 a.m. and I've already got one soaking foot, but sorry to, most of you probably watched my channel for snakes, but 
This puffer fish is amazing. Let's prod it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pick it up. The puffer fish? Yeah. yeah, you should. My phone has run out of battery. Really? Can you film this? Yeah, yeah, I can film this. What is going on? <laughs> you wanna get this first? Yeah, yeah, you can pass that one to Keith. Go on. Yeah, Keith. Keith, sentience check. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, pass it across. No, don't drop it, don't drop it. Go, Keith, man, not on video. Dude, not on video, man. Alright, Keith's got the snake now. And Alex is gonna go ham on the puffer! <laughs> Can you take your torch off? Whoa. That's so cute. Show that to me, please. That is the, one of the cutest fish I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. Maybe we're completely misleading it and porcupine fish and puffers are different, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got a good. Hold on, let me take a picture before yeah. you put it back. Wow, guys. So there's a colubrina there, but we actually spotted it after. Harry caught this. Okay, you're probably thinking, what is that? Another colubrina? No, 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 no. Look at the head. You see that? No yellow band at the front. You see that? It's kind of aqua blue coloration throughout the body. This is Laticauda Laticauda, a lifer for everyone in the group and something we were really, really hoping to find here, but maybe not expecting. It's also considerably bigger than all the Laticauda, we, Laticauda colubrina that we've seen. And Laticauda, Laticauda is usually considered to be smaller. Mm. This could just be because maybe like less of them are being found overall, but I would be more inclined to believe these are smaller since I'm, I'm sure larger numbers have been found in areas like this, the Philippines and elsewhere across their very, very expansive range. Look at this snake. I, I've got to say like, I thought that they were hard to tell apart, but just looking at it instantly, you, you know this is not Colubrina. And I'd be honestly go ahead and say that this is a lot more beautiful. Like the colors on this are simply unreal. Look at that in my hand there. Awesome paddle on the tail. And the head just has an overall kind of cooler look without that goofy yellow band on the front. Of course, just like Colubrina, they are as docile as anything. You can hold them whatever way you like. Uh, people won't really consider this free handling in these. I mean, everyone does it more or less, but. You have a color snap. Yeah. This one is in shed. But. Yeah, Harry brought the colubrina that just swam up to us when we were admiring this over, and you can see two very, very different snakes. Juvenile colubrina can often be quite striking like this, but damn, what a what a choice to come down to the beach. We are so lucky. Oh, speedy boy. <laughs> Incredible. Look at this. This if this is the last snake we see on the trip, then. That's fantastic. Where are you going? You going into my bag over there? <laughs> no, no, just onto the sea. But this is a fantastic find, a lifer for me, one that occurs in Thailand, but very, very rare. Laticauda, Laticauda. The what's the common name? Uh, blue black blue, sea blue crate. Blue sea crate. Blue sea crate, I think. Mm. Amazing. And with that, another night of less than four hours sleep concluded our time on this amazing island. But don't worry. We're flying to somewhere else in the Philippines to begin another incredible adventure. Coming soon, stay tuned.